good morning welcome back today we shall look at isbp on road rail and inland waterway road rail and inland waterway paragraphs j1 to j20 of isbp first isbp helps us understand when article 24 of ucp will be applicable when there is a requirement in the credit for movement of goods by either road or rail or inland waterway that is truckway bills or CMR, conventions, merchandises or OTOs are called for. Then article 24 is applicable. When there is a requirement for a credit in the credit for movement of goods either by road, rail or inland waterway, article 24 is applicable. The transport document so submitted as per the requirement of the credit will be examined as per article 24 and such a document has to be signed as described in 24A1. The transport document should indicate the name of the carrier identified as carrier and if signed by a branch it will be considered as a signature of the carrier. We have a limited situations where agents are signing for carrier. Here the carrier implies the issuing carrier, actual carrier, succeeding carrier, contracting carrier, everybody because this is a road, rail or inland uh, transport. We could have situations where the carrier who issues the transport document need not necessarily be the actual carrier who carries the goods or need not necessarily be the carrier from who had received the goods from the carrier who had issued the transport document. So you have issuing carrier, you have a succeeding carrier or you might be the carrier who is just contracting but not actually carrying. So any carrier is okay but it should be issued by carrier and signed by carrier and indicate the name of the carrier. So identity capacity should be made clear. Any signature, notation or stamp of having received the goods should appear to have been made by the carrier, identified as carrier or a named agent acting for and on behalf of the carrier or this receipt should be by the railway company and the stamp of a railway station of departure. If there is a stamp of the railway station of departure, it will be considered as a receipt by the railway company and such a stamp is acceptable in lieu of the signature or notation. While signing, the road, rail or inland waterway transport document, the word carrier need not appear on the signature line. While signing on a road, rail or inland waterway, the word carrier need not appear on the signature line if the carrier is identified elsewhere. And for railway companies, only the carbon copy or the round seal on the railway station where departure is happening will be there and the name of the carrier will normally be not identified. Because that railway company will tell, the stamp will tell what is the railway, which railway company or which railway station it is. Regarding the places, the transport document should indicate the place of shipment and place of destination stated in the credit. So, the place from where the goods should move and the place to where the goods should move, the departure and the dispatch, those places mentioned in the credit should be indicated in the transport document. Name of the country need not be stated and if the credit indicates a geographical area, the actual places should be mentioned and the area need not be mentioned. What is an original? The rail or inland waterway transport document considered as original whether it is marked original or not. In case of rail or inland waterway, whatever issued and submitted will be considered as original whether it is marked original or not. If it is road, then the original for consigner or shipper or bear no marking. If it is a road transport, it should be original for the consigner or shipper just as a transport document or it should have no marking as to whom it belongs to. The original for consigner or shipper copy of the road transport document or duplicate rail transport document shall suffice. If it is a duplicate of the rail transport document, there is a carbon copy that will be acceptable or if it is original for the consigner, the shipper copy, it will be acceptable or if it bears no marking, it will be acceptable. Duplicate or carbon copy of rail transport document authenticated by stamp of railway station is also acceptable. Duplicate rail transport document or carbon copy stamped by the railway station is acceptable. In case of road, container for shipper copy is acceptable as original transport document. Consignee. When credit requires consigned to the order of a named entity, transport document may indicate that the goods are consigned to that entity. The word to order may not be there in the transport document. And it is still acceptable because these are not documents of title, these are not negotiable and this cannot be by endorsement and delivery transferred to another party. So the words to order may not appear on the transfer document and it is still okay because it doesn't add value. 
when the credit request is consigned to the order without naming the entity the transfer document can be consigned to the issuing bank or to the applicant and without it could be with or without mentioning the word to order because mentioning the word to order does not add value if the credit requires an inland waterway it may be issued as bl so if it is issued as bl then other articles of bl might be applicable with respect to the consignee and notify party with respect to notify if the credit stipulates the details of one or more notify parties the transport document can indicate any one or more additional parties if the credit does not stipulate the notify party the transport document may indicate uh, any notify party and if applicant is mentioned as a notify party the details of the address and contact details should not conflict with the credit if applicant is mentioned as a notify party and if the credit is silent then the details mentioned in the transport document should not conflict with other documents credit and the data in the document itself when credit requires the road rail or inland waterway transport document to evidence that goods have been consigned to the order of issuing bank or consigned to the order of applicant or whatever then the transport document may indicate the name of the issuing bank need not indicate their respective addresses or contact details and if indicated need not be should not be uh, if uh, indicated it should not be in conflict with the credit and the transport document need not indicate to order it can just say consigned to the issuing bank or consigned to the applicant the address and contact details should not be conflicting the address and contact details of the consignee or the notify party should not be conflicting with the credit coming to transshipment and partial shipment what is transshipment unloading and reloading of goods from one means of conveyance to another within the same mode if it is road it should be within truck if it is rail it will be within two wagons of the railway if it is inland waterway it may be between two large barges or between two boats or whatever it is so this is a transshipment unloading and reloading within from one means to another within the same mode and it could be truck lorry train barge trailer roll on roll on roll off it will be in um, barge or trailer only it should happen during the carriage from the port of shipment to the port of destination many times what happens is goods are loaded onto a trailer trailer is loaded onto a ship ship is or it is loaded on a large barge it is then carried into a vessel or an aircraft again it is unloaded again the trailer move keep moves moving so this is what they do in a multimodal or a road transport situation and so this is not considered as transshipment if the unloading or reloading is not happening between the places stated in the credit from one means of conveyance to another within the same mode what is partial shipment partial shipment is shipment on more than one means of conveyance even when such means leave for the same destination on the same day when credit prohibit partial shipment when more than one transport document is submitted transport document should indicate that it covers shipment dispatch on the same means of conveyance on the same journey on the same destination same means of conveyance same journey same destination if it is not same means of conveyance then it will become partial shipment and credit is prohibiting partial shipment so it might become discrepant and non complying if there is a more than one transport document with multiple means if there is more than one transport document with multiple dates of shipment then the latest date of shipment will be considered for presentation period and last shipment date when credit allows partial shipment when more than one transport document is submitted earliest date is considered for presentation period earliest date of the multiple dates on transport document multiple transport document is considered as the last date for shipment when credit allows partial shipment and shipment on different means of conveyance or same means of conveyance is allowed mean though when uh, when more than one transport document is submitted shipment on different means is also allowed because partial shipment is allowed the word clean need not appear clean means uh, defective condition of goods or um, packaging not mentioned deletion of the word clean does not make it defective goods can be mentioned in any form not need not be corresponding need not be mirror image should not be conflict with corrections has to be authenticated by the carrier or as agents for the carrier that is by the issuer copies need not be authenticated with regards to freight an indication in the document on the payment of freight may be not identified with the, not not identical to credit that is freight collect and freight payable at destination things like that so changes in the word the english has been phrased and it should not conflict with what is stated in the credit and uh, the indication of freight is fulfilled by completion of boxes marked franco 
which means freight prepaid and non franco means freight to be collected franco means paid non franco means not at paid this uh, this words franco non franco or filling up the fields which has title as franco non franco will be adequate indication of the freight related requirements as per the credit so thanks for watching this video uh, we have had a discussion on the road rail and inland waterway we shall meet again on another session on another subject under isbp till then goodbye